Welcome back to Primordial Pumpkin Playthroughs, where on Wednesdays I like to read you stories that ChatGPT4 and I have created just for you. This week we'll be reading a couple of stories with a theme of dark and mysterious, so if that's up your alley, why don't you sit down and relax and listen to these creepy, mysterious, dark stories. Story number one, The Whispering Shadows. In the small, forgotten town of Ravensbrook, nestled deep within the ancient forest, there was a legend that no one dared to speak of. The townsfolk whispered of a curse that befell the town centuries ago, a curse that brought with it the whispering shadows. It all began on a moonless night, when the air was thick with an eerie silence. The townspeople had long since retreated to their homes, locking their doors and windows for they knew that the shadows came alive in the darkness. The only sound that could be heard was the distant hoot of an owl, a lone sentinel in the night. In the heart of the forest stood an old, decrepit mansion, its walls covered in ivy and its windows shattered. This was the Blackwood Manor, once the grandest house in Ravensbrook, now a decaying relic of the past. It was said that the manor was the source of the curse and that the spirits of those who had perished within its walls still roamed the halls seeking vengeance. One fateful night, a young woman named Eliza, driven by curiosity and a desire to uncover the truth, ventured into the forest. She had heard the stories of the Whispering Shadows, but she was determined to find out what really happened at Blackwood Manor. Armed with only a lantern and her courage, she made her way through the dense underbrush, the light from her lantern casting long, flickering shadows on the trees. As she approached the manor, a chill ran down her spine. The air grew colder, and she could feel the weight of unseen eyes watching her every move. She pushed open the creaking gate and stepped onto the overgrown path that led to the front door. The manor loomed before her its dark silhouette a stark contrast against the night sky. Eliza took a deep breath and pushed open the heavy wooden door. It groaned in protest, as if warning her to turn back. But she pressed on, her lantern casting a dim light on the dusty, cobweb-covered interior. The air was thick with the scent of decay, and the silence was deafening. As she explored the manor, she began to hear faint whispers, barely audible, but unmistakable. They seemed to come from the very walls themselves, echoing through the empty halls. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, and Eliza could feel a presence closing in around her. She stumbled upon a grand staircase, its once majestic banister now rotting and splintered. She ascended the stairs, each step creaking under her weight. At the top, she found herself in a long corridor lined with doors that seemed to stretch into infinity. The whispers were louder now, almost deafening, and she could feel the shadows closing in around her. With trembling hands, she opened the door at the end of the corridor. Inside, she found a room bathed in an eerie, unnatural light. In the center of the room stood a figure, shrouded in darkness, its eyes glowing with a malevolent light. The whispers reached a crescendo, and Eliza realized with horror that the figure was not alone. The room was filled with the spirits of the damned, their eyes glowing with the same malevolent light. The figure stepped forward, and Eliza felt a cold hand close around her wrist. The whispers turned into screams, and she knew that she had made a terrible mistake. The shadows closed in around her, and the last thing she saw was the glowing eyes of the figure, filled with an ancient, unending rage. The townsfolk of Ravensbrook never saw Eliza again. Her disappearance became just another chapter in the legend of the Whispering Shadows a cautionary tale for those who dare to venture into the forest. And on moonless nights, when the air is thick with silence, the whispers can still be heard echoing through the trees, a reminder of the darkness that lurks within Blackwood Manor. Story number two. 
The Desolation of Epsilon 9 The spaceship Aurora was on a routine mission transporting a crew of scientists and engineers to a distant research outpost. The journey had been uneventful until they encountered a sudden and violent storm in an uncharted region of space known as the Epsilon Sector. The storm battered the ship, causing critical systems to fail. With no other options, the captain ordered an emergency landing on the nearest planet, Epsilon 9. Epsilon 9 was a desolate and foreboding world, its surface covered in jagged rocks and twisted barren trees. The sky was a perpetual twilight, casting an eerie glow over the landscape. As the aurora descended, the crew could see vast, dark canyons and ominous shadows moving below. The crash was brutal. The ship skidded across the rocky terrain, tearing apart as it went. When it finally came to a halt, only a handful of the crew had survived. Among them were Dr. Elena Carter, a biologist, Lieutenant Mark Harris, the ship's security officer, and a few others who were dazed and injured. As they gathered their bearings, the survivors quickly realized that their situation was dire. The ship was beyond repair, and their communication systems were destroyed. They were stranded on a hostile planet with no way to call for help. Dr. Carter took charge organizing the survivors and setting up a makeshift camp near the wreckage. They salvaged what supplies they could and began to assess their surroundings. It wasn't long before they discovered that they were not alone. The first night, they heard strange noises coming from the darkness. Low growls and hisses echoed through the canyons, sending chills down their spines. Lieutenant Harris took the first watch, his eyes scanning the shadows for any sign of movement. As the days passed, the survivors began to notice signs of the creatures that inhabited the planet. They found tracks in the dirt, claw marks on the rocks, and the remains of small animals that had been torn apart. The creatures were watching them, waiting for the right moment to strike. One by one, the survivors began to disappear. It started with the engineer, who went to fetch water from a nearby stream and never returned. Then the medic vanished while tending to an injured crew member. Panic set in as the survivors realized they were being hunted. Dr. Carter and Lieutenant Harris decided to take action. They armed themselves with makeshift weapons and set out to find the creatures that were stalking them. They followed the tracks deep into the canyons, their hearts pounding with fear and determination. As they ventured deeper into the darkness, they came face to face with the creatures. They were unlike anything they had ever seen. Tall, skeletal beings with elongated limbs and razor-sharp claws. Their eyes glowed with a malevolent light, and their movements were swift and silent. The battle was fierce and desperate. Dr. Carter and Lieutenant Harris fought with everything they had, but the creatures were relentless. One by one, the survivors fell, until only Dr. Carter remained. Wounded and exhausted, Dr. Carter stumbled through the canyons, the creatures closing in around her. She knew she couldn't outrun them, but she was determined to make a final stand. She found a narrow crevice in the rocks and wedged herself inside, clutching her weapon tightly. The creatures surrounded her, their glowing eyes piercing the darkness. Dr. Carter took a deep breath and prepared to fight to the end. But as the creatures closed in, a blinding light filled the canyon. The creatures recoiled, hissing and snarling, and then they were gone. Dr. Carter looked up to see a rescue ship descending from the sky. The light from its searchlights had driven the creatures away. She collapsed in relief as the rescue team pulled her from the crevice and carried her to safety. As the ship lifted off, Dr. Carter looked back at the desolate landscape of Epsilon 9. She knew that the planet held many more secrets and dangers, but she was grateful to have survived. The legends of the creatures of Epsilon 9 would live on, 
a cautionary tale for those who dare to venture into the unknown. All right, those two stories were written by ChatGPT4 following my prompts. Uh, we hope that you were entertained today, and if you were, come back next Wednesday where I'll have more stories for you, set to more video game playthrough. Goodbye.